we going. I know that we both rhyme, and we it was just like, yeah, this nigga's nice, and mm -hmm. he, you know, and it was just a mutual thing. You know what I mean? Like, we was like brothers, like niggas was in contact every day. You know what I'm saying? Writing and shit. Writing. I either went to his crib, he came to my crib. Mm -hmm. We always had, like, we was eating the most unhealthy shit, but the best shit in the world. I, I know your niggas was eating Chinese food. Nah, we Hell was no. straight fucking Hagen dazs ice cream <laughs> and fucking Apple Jacks, man. <laughs> like, niggas was, like, all the sugar, like, niggas was up, up, like, half the night, man. I used sometimes to leave his crib three in the morning. It wasn't on no watching TV shit. Mm -hmm. We was still at the table. Mm-hmm. You know, on that shit. On some bullshit, yeah. We was still, we was at the table. It was like, and then then passing that shit back and forth, writing mm -hmm. routines, all types of shit. Uh, you know. Now it's 1993, six years later, and Jay-Z's making moves, calling shots, and building that dynasty we call The Rock. Jazzo has moved to Atlanta to start a new life and put his rap career aside and gets a call from his man, Jigga Man Jay-Z. 93, I think, was the year when he really called me and was like, yo, man, say, yo, this the time, man, we getting ready to do this shit, this Rockefeller shit, blah, blah, blah. Yo, you need to come home, you know, this, that, and the other. Because what you was doing, from what I heard, you was in Atlanta or something like that? Yeah, I was in Atlanta. You know, I moved to Atlanta in, like, 92, and, um, he was like, Jazz, you need to come home, man, for real. You know, and eventually, you know, I came home. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and, now, um, what what was it like being away from someone you would call your brother at that time? And he called you and said, yo, we getting ready to move. He told you who he was running with back then? Like, yo, it's me and so-and-so and so-and-so. Nah, so. I knew he was running with. Okay. Like, we, I mean, we had, for the most part, was the same people. You know what okay. I'm saying? Whether it be cats from the projects or, uh -huh. you know, niggas in Maryland. You okay. know what I'm saying? We all, we ran with the same niggas. Okay. So, you know, it was no big deal for the most part. I mean, it wasn't so much of a change, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I mean, you know, I'm a grown man, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I already was in a situation where, you know, I had a daughter. Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to, I was just trying to, I was just trying to make things right. Coming back from Atlanta, you know, I really didn't try to fit in so much. It's like I'm me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's when um, I was approached with the whole situation where, um, you know, Clark Kent introduced us to Damon Dash. Okay. Um, and Damon wanted to manage all of us, all of us being me, Jay, and Source Money. Okay. Um, we started this group. Um, pause. Name of the group was um, Hard Pack. Okay. So um, we did like about somewhere up from five to seven songs. Okay. And then you know Jay was doing more songs on his own, mm -hmm. which was leading me to believe other things, yeah. which is why I didn't really want to <laughs> fuck with Damon as far as management. What was it leading you to believe? Come on, man. The obvious. You know what I'm saying? And like this, like Jay is gonna be the front man, which. Me being a team player, I had no problem with. Yeah. But me being who I was and what I established and my Wasn't skill level, I was like, nah, get the fuck out. But of here. as time went on, I saw that his real interest was like, yo, we need Jay to um, lead most of these songs and this, that, and the other. I was like, word. I'm like, nah, I ain't really used to that because yeah. I had a manager before and that nigga ain't say he ain't have nothing to do with my <laughs> creative process yeah. and here I got this nigga younger than me that for all intents and purposes ain't no shit about my kind of music the mm -hmm. music that I was fucking with I'm like dog as far as I'm concerned you a youngster you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying and you don't know that shit or you don't know what I'm trying to portray mm -hmm. this is not what I'm trying to portray and this is Dame Dash trying to sign you or sign to, us the management yeah. but I think all of it for the most part you know I mean he had good intentions but I mean whatever his intentions were you know I don't really give a fuck understand the moment stop everything the originator I wasn't the first nigga like like it was Jay's idea to use seven minutes of funk mm -hmm. and um he approached like Clark Kent to mm -hmm. do it. 
Clark Kent was like, I can't do it because it don't loop right. Yeah. You know, the shit is off at certain places. He can't do it. He approached a couple of other producers to try to do it. And they, you know, unsu they were unsuccessful. So then he came to me. Okay. When he, when he, when he, <laughs> when he came to me, right? He was like, yo, now I'm asking you to do it because I know if anybody could do it, you could do it. So I'm just looking at him and I'm like, nigga, I talk to producers, man. Them niggas come back to me, dog. Yeah. Them niggas respect me. So you forgetting something. Like, especially at that time. So that nigga trying to go past you and then right. had to come back had to you. Had to come back to me. You know what I'm saying? And he knew I could do it because he know I owns that machine. You know, um, so basically, you know, Clark Kent was right. It wasn't a, a you know, a music that you could loop up like yeah. that, you know, in a, in a sequence and box it in. So what I did, I took like about, one second, I took like about six or seven pieces of it uh -huh. and no sympathy and no play. I just hit them all in sequence, five minutes. Boom, 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 boom. The riches and diamond rings. Real niggas do real things. So, so Jay come to so, you so asking you to me, about the yo, seven minutes. I, if fun. anybody could do it, I know you could do it. And mm -hmm. you know the whole song and dancing. In my mind, I'm laughing at this nigga. I'm like, damn dogs, I'm your man, man. Why ain't you come to me first, man? Yeah. Like, you know, like I can't use that paper, nigga. I ain't rich. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I suppose you eating, dog. I'm supposed to be eating. You started out making. Small time bacon, two little niggas faking. I think it was more when I left. Mm -hmm. When I left, a lot of the situation changed, and then also. What do you mean, like when you left? When I when I left New York and went to okay. Atlanta, okay. A lot of this, uh, our you know our relationship changed, and I, I think for some reason I think there are things that Jay has issues with that he never talked to me about. Mm -hmm. And I think those shits just lingered and that shit is on him. I know what y'all niggas asking yourself. You gonna ever fall off? It's just like you sitting with your man and y'all joking around, kid mm -hmm. around, act silly and shit. And y'all ain't care who the fuck was around. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You was doing your thing, acting silly, ha ha ha, he he. But then, you know, you away for a little while and then you come back and then, you know, you kid around like that, and then this nigga, like, he don't really kid around like that. No and like, what's up with this nigga? It's like, yeah, this nigga yeah. done changed up. I'm the same nigga. I'm cracking yeah. the same bullshit. But now you you want some other shit. Like, you fronting in front of these niggas? Yeah. Like, fuck these niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? We could be silly, but this nigga ever try to take me for less than who I am, mm -hmm. I smack his fucking head off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even no problem. What's beef? Beef is when you need to cast to go to sleep. Feel me? Cause that's how I felt about him. If I'm going out of town, my man's going out of town. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? If I even little shit like per diem, if I get this amount per diem, yo, my man's got to get this amount per diem. I used to have arguments with with Varnell and and, and Glenice all the time. They were like, but Jazz, you know, you taking money out your own pocket. I'm like, I don't care. That's my man. Yeah. But the problem I have with this whole shit, dog, is that the nigga never stood up for me like that. That's my problem. So anybody want to know why I got a problem, I mm -hmm. should have a problem. Yeah. When I put my career and I put my relationship with the people who were in control of my success at my label, and I put all of that on the line for my mans, and then when the tables are turned, he don't do a tenth of that. He don't do a hundredth of that. I can't fuck with that nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's some shit that you just don't do. That's that shit that nigga get a baseball back to his head in the street. It's easy to it's easy to portray something. Nas Nas kind of said he was living your life on records, basically. Yeah, for the most part. Uh huh. For the most part, and I'm not gonna sit here like I do know some of his history where he actually did his thing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't do his thing. He had other people do that thing for him. Yeah. And he talked the life and lived the life. Okay. After the fact. My life is not about Jay-Z. Uh -huh. I'm Jazz O, and if anything, Jay-Z's life is about me. Justin Bras is in this atmosphere. Yo, Frost here. It's your night, shorty. Get your lip law smith. Toss the panties. This is Marcy family. This is Kings County, you hear me? Spring before. That all. Ain't nothing po but this alcohol. My number's complicated algebra. I 
Lean in cars, lean off a car.